Hi, um, this is going to be a hard video. I'm going to try to make it, um, you know, like with the most material I have. I wanted to tell from my perspective how the world changed from COVID-19 until 2022 we're near August and I'm guessing that surviving this um, two, three years has been an odyssey to say the least. So as you can say, um, it's winter here. We have winter on the middle of the year, which means August and uh, you know, until twenty something of twenty one of September, it, it doesn't. We we don't go to spring. So, if you're watching this in the U.S., our stations are like um, upside down. So um, that's why the warm clothing and all. But um, I wanted to just leave a record because. I'm going to apply my fourth uh, vaccine for COVID-19 um, right now and I want to document all the craziness that has been happening throughout since the last moment. I actually remember uh, the moment that I remember to be normal and I remember this so clearly because these are like life-changing events where you actually remember every single step, every single day, every single news, every single happening that you got your hands off. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not had been a stuff for me, but it has been offer for some people um my uncle had a uh, passed away prior but my two aunts passed away around the time of covid uh, more particularly my last uncle and now the only one the let's just say from the four brothers um my mom is the youngest one and is the only one alive right now. And by youngest one, I mean she's 72. So, uh, yeah, it's not young. I mean, it's the younger one of the four brothers. But all of the other ones, all of my aunts and uncles have passed away. So, um... I'm guessing that we all knew somebody or had someone in a family that passed due to COVID, but since I kept my family very airtight and I only have connection with few people, I just didn't lost a significant people to me, uh, at least for now, <laughs> finger crossed, but, um, but... I remember the last day I went out with my mom and it felt normal. Uh, of course, in each country, um, the measures variated and the dates are not the exact same, but we were celebrating on Chinatown uh, the new year, um, which was the year of the steel rat, I think have to double check on that which was 2020 and uh, four days after that we were all unable to leave our houses unless it was because we were dying so you get the idea <laughs> and I actually filmed that I, I filmed that now in this um, a lot has happened a lot uh, has happened in these last uh, years. So, as you can imagine, life has been weird. At least weird for me. I'm 40. I don't know. Some people say I'm 38. I'm not. I'm 40. And 
this August, I'm going to be 40, which I'm 39, but technically I'm 40. By the time you see this, probably I'll be 40. Um, and I think this, this just, I think this changed us all. I don't think there is a single human being on earth that didn't change. So, um, I think we had the, I think I had the benefit of carrying a life prior to that in which I was used to stay at home because all my activities were homemade, most of them, but I haven't taken a single uh, public transportation since 2020, early 2020. I haven't taken a bus, I haven't taken a subway, I haven't taken a train, I haven't taken anything of that. If I have to go somewhere and I don't have a car, nobody here is happy because it's like having a car in New York. Like, why would you use a car if public transportation just uh, takes you everywhere and you have cabs? So, um, since that moment on, I had been um, taking uh, rent cars, like, you know, Uber, uh, Didi, whatever you call them, or literally just cabs. Because uh, there are two main things you need to understand. There are two distances in which you need to do something. You either can walk there, because you're in the heart of the east, central city, or you need the transportation. And if you actually need the transportation, it just wasn't worth it to risk your health and your life uh, so for saving a couple bucks. So uh, in that moment, I prefer to take a cab or something like that. I've been using, um, you know, uh, private, we could say private transportation. Um, but looking back, I clearly remember, uh, the last time I took a bus. I don't remember exactly the last time I took a subway because, uh, most of the time I was taking subways, uh, you know, like three subways a day, uh, or something like that. If I had to go out, all my outs were in, made in subways. Uh, I don't mean the the sandwiches, I mean like real subways. Um, but I do remember the surreal experience of having taken the last bus. And it was something that I will carry on my memory for the rest of my life. And it was just a ride on a bus. So it was... Um, I had older... Uh, prior um, the lockdown, the first lockdown, which was brutal. Um, I had uh, ordered something from Japan and I had to uh, go and get it. It was for my mom, it was a doll, it was a BJD from Manorak. So um, I remember going very late at night, uh, I don't know, um, hiding myself. Um, there wasn't a lockdown into that same day. Um, and uh, just acquiring the doll, just from the dealer uh, that brought it overseas, getting the doll, hopping into this uh, bus and taking, uh, I don't know, a 10 minute ride back home. And Possibly the last uh, bus ride I remember having taken because I know that same day at um, the zero hours from the next day, uh, the president of our nation just went out to national TV saying that you couldn't leave your house for anything. Um, it didn't matter if you were infected or not because there weren't any tests, there weren't any vaccines. Um, all we knew is that we could leave, depending on the numbers of our ID card, 
which is like a social security number here. Um, some days and some others not, and only to go to the pharmacy and to buy essential uh, needs like food or water or whatever you were going to buy. You weren't allowed to go out just because you want, wanted to, um, you weren't. Um, this wasn't, the, there wasn't, this was a very apocalyptic uh, scenery. I consider like, I don't know, um, the Avengers when there is the snap and half of the planet, go, half the universe goes missing. Uh, all the all the places were locked. There was no transit whatsoever. There were no cars. Uh, it was total and complete uh, isolation, even if you were outside the fewer times. And when you were, you were terrified because you didn't have a vaccine. You didn't have anything. Uh, so you would cover your mouth with things that nowadays we know we shouldn't use because they are not effective towards the virus, but it was madness. Some people complain because it says, well, the world didn't end it. But as I often say, um, we have a sort of apocalypse that is delivered common comfortably in very uh, small like teacups uh it's not something so like i don't know terminator um skynet taking the power and, and bombarding everyone with nukes uh it isn't something like the walking dead it, it was is something more something longer it's something gradual it's something that kills you from the inside and it might take years and you want to hear the truth the truth is that the moment COVID-19 arrived to wherever country we were in uh it changed us it changed our lives forever our lives as we knew it ended um and as this song said it's the end of the world as we know it uh I feel bad for whoever is having their teen years uh, during these times because I know that I was lucky enough to have fun up to 2018 because people tend to think, oh, she's 40, so she must be, in, I don't know, needing something. And I wasn't. I was partying hard. I was going to events. I was doing my life, so you guys are not going to be able to do that in the same way as me, anywhere, anymore, in any form. Um, there is always the people who is going to be like, I'm taking the risk and I know what I'm doing, but uh, we didn't have to ask ourselves if we were risking our life, we were risking our father's lives, our mother's lives, our brother's lives by going partying. We only knew we were risking our life in any case, in the worst case. Uh, we need to take precautions, but not from an invisible enemy. Now, we have so many variants, and this doesn't look like it's going to end. Um, I don't know. Um, I would like to go back today, in 2022, to those places where I was when all of this started, the last remnants of normal life that I remember, and try to exemplify and show you guys um, how was it and how do I remember it and um, how it is today. Um, what happened in these two years because I think in two years, um, we in Argentina have this saying that Argentinians live in a week what the rest of the world lives in like 10 years. But for once, the entire world was keeping up to us. Like we were changing so fast, so dramatically, each second that um, for once it feels like um, you guys were keeping up. 
for once it felt like you guys were understanding um, the vertigo, the, the fastness of news. This is happening and this is happening and this is happening and this is happening. And in the same day, you could have 20 catastrophes, 20 news that will change your life forever. And the world wasn't used to that. We Argentinians pretty much were, but you guys weren't. So for me, it was much more less dramatic, but it was still dramatic as hell, the changes. And I know that a lot of people died. Uh, and I'm not talking just in my country. Uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, be in, um, with a brand new president, so it took measures uh, our president prior to that was much like Donald Trump, who handled the pandemic like shit. Uh, and we were just changing presidencies. So the president we got, also then it went to hell with the economy. Like right now it's a living hell with the economy. But in the first two years of his four years, a period, uh, the guy just nailed it. Like, of course, you're going to have uh, the reports of people who had it rough, who had it worse than others, but overall, the guy nailed it. Um, the guy just built more hospital, made public health available to everyone, uh, tried to purchase vaccines from everywhere, uh, anywhere. It didn't matter as long as they work. Uh, it tried to, I mean, it stuck up with everything that it could. And I know that if we would have been with the other president who was a friend of Donald Trump, we wouldn't have. Because he said publicly that he didn't matter how many people needed to die, that he wasn't going to do anything about it that we should just keep on dying until the ones who have a superior DNA will thrive. So when you think about it that way, um, it kind of sucks because, yeah, of course, people died here. It was like a mess. But we didn't have those cases in Central America or other countries where people were or most notably uh, in Wuhan, China, where people were just walking and suddenly felt on the street dead, dead, completely dead. And they will stay there and then a patrol will come up and pick up the bodies and burn them or just toss them into mass graves. Um, we keep looking for a third world war, but this was a third world war. Uh, the numbers are in line. Uh, the amount of people that died isn't going back. And that's a fact. And we reached 2022 and I get it. Um, at first, the first vaccines, I was like, okay, um, I don't know, this is too new. In the history of humankind, developing a vaccine in only one year it's suspicious, to say the least. So um, I had my doubts, like any other living human being in the planet. I had my doubts. But then again, I realized that, I don't know, I said, I'm going to just, just wait for a thousand people just to apply the vaccines and see how they react. And it turns out that they reacted well. They didn't die. There was a very small percentage of something happening. So the fact that people are still arguing that these vaccines are working, uh, that these vaccines are brainwashing you, are killing you, are making you sick, or are giving you something else, it just... It's been two years of people just getting vaccinated all over the world. I'm certain that you should get vaccinated. I'm completely sure of it. So um, it just baffles me that people are still thinking if they should get a vaccine. They, I, I'm for, I, I'm going for my fourth dose. 
I have Spagnik one, the, the first component, the second component, then I had uh, Moderna, and now I think I'm going to get another Moderna vaccine. So, um, vaccine yourself now. So, um, on the meantime, um, things were really crazy. And I wanted to just make a video about it um, because I think the history of humankind, as small as it is, we are just a spectacle in the entire universe, it changes. And yeah, perhaps there is a parallel universe in which this never happened, but in this one it happened. And it changed everything. And I think individual stories should be remember uh, often more, more than the ones from the collective because the com collective history can be actually um, recorded by history books. But the little histories, how each person individually just lived throughout this pandemic is going to be the everlasting testimonies of how we faced this as a race. In a thousand billion years, when humanity is gone, these testimonies are the ones who are going to say what the common people thought and felt about it and how it came to the conclusion that they had to um, do certain things that they had never done in their lives. I'm trying to renew my subway pass. Again, not the food chain, the real rail subway. Um, and I don't know if I will ever use it, but I wanted to have it re be, I mean, renew just in case uh, for short trips, perhaps. But uh, now that I'm going for my fourth dose, um, Maybe I will take the chance to go into a theater sometime in the future. I don't know. Uh, I'm still s skeptical. Uh, I've been like in three restaurants or something. And I don't mean full dinners. Uh, like my mom was feeling down. You have to take her to uh, consume a coffee or, or something. So... um. It was just like a sort of in and out, kind of get a sweet treat um, because she has lower pressure and higher pressure. Uh, it's a mess, you know. Um, so um, I've been uh, taking risks there um, in in the food, in, in those food places because another thing about my mom is that if I don't eat, she won't eat. So if she feels bad, if she just, uh, I don't know, is going to pass out in the middle of the street, um, I have to sit and eat. Because if I don't, she won't eat. And, uh, well. Other than that, I've been to supermarkets. And, um, I mean, I've cancelled public transportation from any sort of public transportation. Uh, I've been to supermarkets only when I have to, to pharmacies only when I have to, um, and any other store that I need to go, I would just prefer to wait outside. Uh, I always wear a double mask and kind of Googles, and if I don't have the Googles on, it's because I have my glasses, which are pretty big, so they kind of act like Googles. Uh, they're not as good, but they do their job. So uh, the big question is, what about the movie theaters? What about, um, you know, that part of my life? Because I was kind of retired from making parties outside my life, like getting drunk. But I haven't yet retired from the world of movies. I did want it to... Um, be able to watch the final statement of Jurassic, um, Jurassic World and Jurassic Park Dominion um, in theaters, but I don't think I'm going to do it because 
it's just too much risk. And, and it, it's certainly a movie that changed my life back in 93 and, and all my life. But um, I ended up working in a museum, in fact. But um, I don't think, I don't know if it's worth it. Um, to go into a theater, which is a sealed room for two hours or something, even if you don't eat, even if you don't, I mean, you need to breathe. At very least, you need to breathe. So, um, I'm still assuming that um, I'm going to have to take a decision soon because. I don't know how long it's going to be in theaters. I'm actually amazed that theaters ex still exist, given that streaming services had been like the thing. Uh, I don't have any streaming services, go torrent, but um, certainly it's been an option because nowadays we have bigger screens and we can make popcorn in our houses and just watch the cinema here. Uh, it's not like when I was a child. Like in 93, we had this 20 inches uh, big, chunky TV. And that was it. And going to the cinemas, it is always an experience. Uh, so I have to just calculate how much I want to risk my life for a movie. And that alone just tells you how crazy this ride has been and will be for what if people just don't get vaccinated. Now we have monkeypox and which is like small pops, but um, you know what it takes. And I mean, this is a very um, monkeypox. It has a DNA that is far more advanced than the DNA sequence of COVID. We had it lightly with COVID. And it killed how many people? So, um, people are not caring. They just, I, I don't know what they're doing. I sincerely don't know why they're not getting their vaccines, getting their kids vaccinated. And uh, there were some uh, diseases that we thought they were gone and they're, they're coming back. And you know why they're coming back? Because we didn't vaccinated like how many generations in between I I mean I'm good uh, far as I good uh, I have all my vaccines all of them and I even had the diseases when I was a child so it wouldn't be lethal for me it wouldn't be life-changing but for many people it is because they weren't born in the early 80s, so you guys are not going to get vaccinated. Uh, so. And um, I'm just overtaken by all of this. It's like somebody is giving you a gun and you're holding it uh, from the opposite end that you shouldn't be holding it. But you're still gripping the, the trigger and you wonder yourself when you get shot, how the hell happened. And it is common sense. I mean, everybody can tell why and how it happened. And it's on us, humanity. So I want to wrap this video up here. But I do want to show and make an account of everything that happened. Because I think it is important for people to remember that there was a life prior to this. Kids that now have, I don't know, five years uh, or, or, or even less are going to think that this is normal.